Hi fellow. Just testing with the settings a bit for a new game. Scouts in the air. Let's see what I can see here. First time operating the Congo, so I'm not that <laughs> good with it yet. It's a completely stock battleship too. I'm gonna say I don't really like battleships that much. I mean, they're decent, but um, I'm much more capable with nimble little ships, stuff like that, cruisers, destroyers, even aircraft carriers. Seconds for my shells to arrive. Jesus. I can just lob them over this island. And it's a Congo. Switching to AP. <laughs> Not exactly accurate, but. Oh wow, I got a hit. Almost 14 kilometers out. Omaha there. There's a ship in front of me too. Kuma to Phoenix. The enemy carriers already been spotted. Well outside my range. I'm gonna destroy putting up a smoke screen. There's an Omaha there. He's gonna disappear behind that smoke screen. That Congo. The enemy team has taken the lead. This one's not moving too fast. But too fast for my shots. I need to give this guy more lead. No hits. Gotta start slowly paying attention to my bow as well. Considering that there are a couple of cruisers out there. Torpedoes. Come on. Turn your turrets around. That's what I hate about battleships. They are so slow to turn those turrets. Come on. This thing is getting 
way too close. There you go. Got blown up. But now I have to get out of here before I'm going to get torpedoed by a cruiser. Not sure which cruisers those are. But if they're Kumas... And that means torpedoes. It's a Phoenix. Phoenix is a tier 4 ship. <laughs> We're badly, badly losing this one. as a battleship commander is not exactly helping either. Let's see if I can capture point B. They have already lost three ships. And I think that the platoon system is still match ma <laughs> mixing up the matchmaker. I mean, they got two more ships than we did. Yeah, I'm going to shoot right into that island. This thing does have a smallish secondary battery, all of these guns here. You can probably use that to kill off that destroyer if he gets too close, but I'm also a huge target for this torpedo of his. It's Isokaze. Good thing. The travel time for my shells is very, very low on this distance. Three seconds. Let's risk it. Good hit. Missed. Now I'm right, I'm going right into a smoke screen here. And I'm alone versus a cruiser and a destroyer. And that destroyer is getting way the too close to for my comfort. Here goes my turret. Please kill off this Kuma. 790. The RNG on this game is quite high at the moment. Here come the torpedoes. Oh, uh, this is going to be painful. Dodged one. Or not. Two. Ouch. So that was three hits. Come on. There goes my secondary battery. Great, there's more torpedoes on the way. Direction. Right behind me. Come on. Put those guns on target. 1800, that's it. There you go. Completely blown up. And, yeah, this team is going to go lose so badly. 900 points for the enemy team versus 245 for ours. Disastrous. Okay. Different ship. Guys in chat, let me know what kind of uh, ship I should pick next. I got a Omaha class cruiser. I got a tier 5 independence class aircraft carrier, tier 6 US destroyer, a tier 7 US aircraft carrier. These things are definitely lethal, I've experienced that myself. And then I have a Mutsuki tier 6 Japanese destroyer. Now these ships might seem small, they might not seem that impressive, but these can really pack a punch with those torpedo tubes on the sides of it. Guns rotation on these is terrible by the way. Gun rotation is um, 45 seconds to get the turret rotated 180 degrees, so from, say, all the way to the starboard to all the way port. Compare that to the American destroyers, and you get a degree time of 12 seconds, or a turn time of 12 seconds. So that really, really makes a big impact on this game. But then again, the torpedoes of these ships are not that good. Destroyer, destroyer looks good, aircraft carrier, Omaha. 
The Omaha is almost completely developed by the way. I need to get this thing to, I believe, 17,000 XP. Then I can get the Cleveland at tier 6. That is, if I can afford it. And this thing is going to cost me almost 1.2 million. I don't exactly have that kind of money right now. Okay. Let's see. Destroyer for now. Use destroyer. I have this thing upgraded a little bit. Not that much. But um, it's quite lethal. It has some very, very good torpedoes. If I can again get within 4.5 kilometer range. And that is very, very dangerous to do. If I get too close... I'm going to get shot at not only by primary armaments, but also by secondary armaments, especially on battleships. And this thing does not exactly have the hit points to survive for very long. Okay, we're doing another domination match. That means i got to capture these circles again. Now, the good thing about the destroyer is that it has a very, very low visibility or uh, spotability. It's very hard to detect this ship. And that means that I can get to within 6 kilometers of any ship and not be detected. And I think you can detect it from the air at a range of about 2 to 3 kilometers. So, considering that I have mostly battleships here in the middle, a couple of cruisers there and some more cruisers here, I'm the only destroyer, as you can see, there's only one destroyer icon. That means I'm going to go to the middle because this is the most dangerous area for any ship, especially battleships. Because these battleships can be spotted at extreme ranges. We also got two carriers. Let's see. A ranger and a Saipan. I might be able to take those down if I can sneak through their lines. And that is something that I have done in the past. Where I go through these islands. And that way I manage to get all the way towards the enemy carrier. Uh, top checked. If you press P, yeah, you do turn off the AA. It looks like this. You get this turned off button here. And if you press P again, you turn it back on. So if you turn it off, you're going to be not firing your AA guns, making you even more difficult to detect. Let's see about the rest of the team. We got four battleships, tiers four through seven. Well, that my yogi's a bit out of place. And they got a Farragut as well. So especially these cruisers that I'm worried about. The Omaha's, the Cleveland's, the Aobas, the Pensacola's. Those are especially dangerous. So US guns reload and turn very, very fast. So I gotta be careful with those ships. There's one moving out there. That's the Mogami. It's tier 7. I don't think I've ever seen a Mogami. Now, these ships are in range. I have a range of about 11.7 kilometers on these guns. But I'm not going to use them. I want to stay undetected. And you can see that they have three ships going this way. There's a destroyer out there. That means that the battleships are slowly lumbering their way that way. And this side, you can see one of them there. And that might mean that I might be able to get through the middle. Oh crap, here comes a dive bomber. I would prefer not to get detected by that thing, let alone bombed. Yep, firing at it. The detection isn't too bad at this stage, because there's not that many warships to fire at me. Um, correcting my last. There is a Mogami to fire at me. And it should not have visual on me anymore. But it may fire at my last known location. So I still have to be very, very careful with that. Okay. Capture this area. You can see here by the top of the screen that the, ca the, the square around B, or the diamond shape, slowly goes up. That means I'm capturing the building. This is when my proximity alarm goes off. There, captured B. Uh, destroyers are not a typical aircraft target. No, not really. 
The problem is that a uh, destroyer is extremely fast and nimble, and that is not a target that you want to have for an aircraft carrier. Because... Oh, come on, shut this down. Um, an aircraft carrier usually has the biggest punch in torpedo bombers, and you can see them operating right there. That means that those torpedo bombers um, drop torpedoes pretty close to your ship, either manually in a close spread or automatically in a long spread. And if they do that, then uh, a destroyer is nimble enough to evade most, if not all, of those torpedoes. A cruiser or battleship is not as fast as you just saw with the Congo that I was using. I was in quite a bit of trouble as I was getting engaged by those torpedoes, as I couldn't just dodge them. Whereas this ship, it has a um, rudder turn time of about 3 seconds, so that means I can shift the rudder from port to starboard in 3 seconds. You can just see, if I slam on the rudder here, how fast this ship turns. And uh, keep in mind that this is not the fastest or the most nimble destroyer. And here's my first victim. There is a cruiser behind me in Omaha at almost 6 kilometers, so I'm trying to get outside his range. And there's torpedo bombers returning to the ship. Gotta stay away from these guys. 12 clicks. Problem, my torpedoes are extremely lethal. They do 15,000... Oh, there's a Saipan. They do 15,000 uh, points of damage. But I gotta get within 4 kilometers. 4.5. If I hit a buoy, I'm gonna go right through. There's no problem with that. By the way, I wasn't exactly sure where the carriers were before I saw them, of course. And that's when I was following these torpedo bombers back to their ships. Uh, this guy, by the way, is going to see me, and he's probably going to come for me. So attempt to deploy smoke screen. Changing my course a little bit. You can see that they're now circling. They don't know where I am. Fear port and star pretty. This is going to hurt hard. Set on fire. Didn't lose too many hit points there. Seven clicks out. Engaging. The reload on these guns is amazing, by the way. Five seconds. And I'm just firing HE at these carriers. I can go armor penetration, but I found that HE does the job just fine. Torpedoes in the water. Oh, crap. This might not be dodgeable. I'm probably going to get hit by one of them. Jeez, that was a bad one. I did not expect the torpedoes to kill me outright. Normally, a destroyer can survive one torpedo. That is, at the lower tiers. Um, at the higher tiers, like this one, where I was engaging a ranger, I just had no chance of surviving. So, there you go. So, <laughs> not a great start of the stream so far. I could have done better. So, we're up again for a new ship. Pick your poison. Cruiser, aircraft carrier, Congo, or Japanese destroyer. What would you like to see? By the way, the ships themselves, they look really, really good. I mean, the detail that has gone into these aircraft carriers, for example, is amazing. And you may have seen it already in YouTube videos, but you can actually look at all the guns separately. Now, this ship has some artillery, which is pretty unusual for a carrier. But the AA guns on the ship um, are very, very numerous. I got 47 of these AA guns with a range of a little under a kilometer. And you can just see every single one of these guns in detail. Also got some long range um, AA gun. The Bofors 40mm Mark I. Range of 4.5 kilometers. And then I got my longest range at uh, 5 kilometers. Now, if something gets to within 5 kilometers, I'm screwed anyway. But these things, by the way, double as a secondary armament, so I can engage both ground targets and air targets. Anyway, let's go with an aircraft carrier for this one. Um, I can pick the Ranger. I don't think I have the Ranger fully upgraded yet. Yeah, I got the upgrades of the torpedo bombers. I got upgraded fighters, Grumman F3, F4, sorry, F4, F3s. 
I can still upgrade my torpedo, oh no, my dive bombers. And I can change my flight deck. I have all of the flight deck configurations unlocked. And with this you can pick what kind of fighter or squadron loadout you want to have. So for example I can have two torpedo bombers and two fighters. I can have uh, three fighters and one dive bomber. But that is mostly an anti-air setup. Not so much anti-ground because dive bombers are not that effective. Or I can have a mix of all. One fighter squadron, two torpedo bombers and one bomber squadron. Now because at high tiers, or the high tiers altogether are pretty rare, um, I'm not likely to face something like a Lexington or something of a higher tier cruiser. I'm more likely to face a lower tier because most players seem to be at around tier 5 to 7. And um, the carriers are balanced very very poorly in the sense that um, if I face a carrier that is just one tier higher than me, my fighters don't stand a chance. They're just going to get shot down every single one. Um, they may get one kill, maybe two, but that's it. This, by the way, is a nice game, by the looks of it. Um, I'm here with another Ranger, Thrawn 1968. So we got two aircraft carriers versus one aircraft carrier on their team. <laughs> Saul Goodman. Um, and with this we have plenty of AA fighters and AA superiority probably. That is, if the enemy does not have the air setup. If he does, it's going to be pretty difficult to get through. Now this is the setup that you get. This is pretty much how you play carriers. You play it in a strategic role. You can see that I have a couple of counters here counting down. This is my fighter squadron, two torpedo bomber squadrons and a dive bomber squadron. First thing I want to get in the air are my fighters, because they're the fastest and they can defend not only me but also the rest of my fleet in case I get attacked. So I want to be able to have those online. Um, next I'm going to take off with my torpedo bombers. You can see it actually takes a bit of time for those things to take off. Um, okay, it's time to get number three in the air. And you can see that they are actually taking off from your flight deck. Something I really like. Um, mechanics are um, wonky as you can expect from wargaming. In the sense that sometimes um, you have, for example, two torpedo squadrons on your deck and the aft squadron will suddenly take off instead of the forward one. But, okay. Now this is usually where the uh, destroyers go to flank on A. They might go to B. But first I want to spot those battleships. You can see I'm already engaging some fighters here. Hopefully I can get some support from this other fighter wing, from my fellow carrier. And he's, yep, he spotted them, he's engaging. There's two Congos there, and a Cleveland. Now Clevelands are trouble. They got a ton of AA, and they are not something that I want to engage. See, it looks like he got this, that means I can go hunting for these torpedo bombers. Or, uh, yeah, torpedo bombers. So, squad 3. Squad 3 is my torpedo bomber squadron. I can drop them automatically. And that gives you a pretty wide cone, as you can see. Or I can drop them manually. And that gives them a much, much, much smaller cone. With um, less chance to hit, in a way. It depends on how accurate you yourself are. So I'm going to use these manually. I'm going to aim a little bit in front of the ship. Our team has taken the lead. And same for this one. There you go. This is going to be a beautiful salvo. Hitting this ship with a couple of torpedoes. There you go. Second wave. I should have aimed it a little bit more to the front. And that thing just lost 20,000 hit points. 24,000. Uh, now, let's see if I can hit this destroyer with my, torpedo, uh, with my dive bomber. That's what those things were designed to do. Yep, I got a hit on him. Two hits, and I got six torpedo hits. Now my squadrons are returning to my ship. You can see that they're coming in here, and I'm a bit worried about this dive bomber squadron. They are probably going to try and find the carrier, me. Uh, maneuvering the carrier is pretty standard like you do the other ships. I can either switch it to autopilot, so set a course to go there, which is something that all ships can do, by the way. 
or I can just uh, pilot it manually. So, um, in case that there is an enemy air attack coming in, like now, I'm going to make myself a small target, so I'm going to um, completely go sideways to make sure most of my guns can fire at this squadron and that it's not as easy to hit me. You can see and hear all of these guns going off. Shot down one plane. And, yep, they did get me, but not by as much. What I was trying to prevent them to do is to go at me in a complete single run, where they can have several bombs hit my flight deck. By doing it... Oh, shit. Torpedo bombers. By doing it this way, um, I presented only this section of my uh, ship. Uh, unfortunately, my fighters are coming back. Torpedoes were dropped too close to my ship, and that means that some of them were not active yet. So I got away pretty good there. It could have been a much, much worse. Now, group three is back up. And, oh crap, I got a destroyer coming in. That is not good. Now, I guess all the air groups in, the, or the air wings in the air. Look at that, this Cleveland's in range. Oh crap. And there's more torpedo bombers coming in. Although this squadron is damn near dead. Here comes another torpedo. Easy to evade. I'm much, much more worried about that destroyer. And its accompanying cruiser. Yeah, I parked my carrier in the worst possible spot here. Wow, somebody took care of the Cleveland. Awesome. That really saved my ass. But I'm still flooding. You can see the flood marker here. And I'm losing hit points quite fast. There you go. Repair team, no longer flooding. I'm gonna get the hell out of here. Problem solved, sir. Now, they have all of their ships bunched up here, including an aircraft carrier. So I wanna try and get that ship hit by as many torpedoes as I can. He's not going to go anywhere because he just ran aground. So time for some payback. He's moving again. He's not going to go anywhere fast though. Taking fire. And I'm getting engaged. That's not good. Unlucky for him, I got a load of these torpedo squadrons coming in. But this... Damn it, I'm also getting engaged with this squadron. I might get one hit there, if I'm lucky. No, nope, didn't get it. And no, I'm not going to send in my dive bombers. And this squadron dropped way too late, because I had it on manual. So that was kind of stupid. Now this is always the challenge with uh, aircraft carriers. Sometimes you're just going to have amazing games where you do tons and tons and tons of damage. And some games, you're just not hitting anything. Um, let's see, I'm not going to engage this thing, but there are other ships to target. Like this Congo. Now dive bombers I don't aim manually because it's too much of a hassle, but torpedo bombers are perfectly capable. You can see that I lost most of my flight here. There's only one out of six blocks remaining. That means that one out of six of my aircraft made it out alive. So that's bad news for me. Uh, but I got 16 torpedo planes in my hangar, so I can easily replenish this squadron. Uh, do I need an ally? Yeah, it'd be great. If you have access to the beta, sign. Uh, join the game. Add me as a friend. Standing by for instructions. Over. Um, I think that, yep, that was the aircraft carrier that just went down. It even broke right down the middle. Got one hit on that Congo. But I'm engaged by Pensacolas, Nagados, and Congos. Yeah, I'm not very likely going to make it out with that squadron. Pretty impressive that I actually got that far with one plane. 
Now my secondary flight is also being engaged. I'm going to keep these guys back a little bit. I can still use them as scouts, but since the enemy aircraft carrier died, they don't really have a role. Other than scouting, of course. My in-game name is Stealth17. Now, Flight 3 is in the air, moving towards this Nagato. Somebody launched their torpedoes way too early, it's probably that Aoba. He does not want to get engaged by this ship, but he might hit that Matsuki if he's not careful. Problem is, once these torpedoes are in the water, you have absolutely no control over them. And um, I have actually been sunk by friendly torpedoes quite often, simply because people just don't have a clue where to aim those things. Um, and sometimes they just fire them off blindly, hoping to hit something. Which um, ends up hitting something, but it's usually me. And of course, I'm to blame for that as well, because I should have better situational awareness than that. Now, a Nagata was a pretty fast um, battleship, so I gotta aim it pretty far in front of this ship. There you go. This should probably sink that ship. Look at that. Bye. That just took out 26,000 hit points. Our victory is in sight. Now, in case you're wondering, I unfortunately don't have any more access keys to the beta. Um, Wargame. I asked Wargame for more keys so that I could give them out to you guys. But the problem is the Wargame said, "Well, um, we just don't. We don't just give out keys. If you have a big enough following on Twitch." Um, we're gonna contact you. So it's pretty much a don't call us, we'll call you situation. Now this ship is probably gonna die before I can even get a torpedo into it. Yeah, it's gonna be way outside of my range of my torpedoes anyway. Got five in the air. Um, closing on these Pensacolas. I wouldn't be surprised if these guys were operating in a platoon. When they're not. Airborne. Three's returning, four's returning, two's still near. I'm more or less keeping an eye on these battleships, although um, this Aoba should have a pretty easy time detecting those as well. Large torpedo spreads from these torpedo bombers here. Now these things were not aimed manually, they were aimed uh, automatically, and that's why you have such a large spread. I usually don't do that anymore, because it's giving you less damage per second output. And by that I mean that you have less... Oh crap, what are you going to hit? Oh, the Aoba. It's not too bad then. I thought it was going for me. Um, if you do not aim your torpedoes manually, like I was doing there, then you don't do as much damage. You're not ha You don't have as many torpedoes hit the ship. And that means less damage done throughout the game. There you go, we got a thousand points, game done. Now, 2000 XP, 99 free XP, 64,000 received. Uh, 12 torpedo hits, 3 bomber hits, shot on 11 planes, 1 critical damage, set 3 ships on fire, caused 3 units of flooding, defended the base 2 times. Um, yeah, came second in the team, based on XP. Detailed reports also going to tell you quite a bit. Um, this was a pretty terrible game for me, considering I only did 48,000. In a carrier, I'm much more likely to get um, up to around 60 to 80,000 points of damage. Those are good games. Okay, um, let's have Teak in the platoon. Okay. You can see that the um, the friends list, if you will, looks completely different as well. This is the division, which is the new platoon section. And with that, you can invite people, friends, uh, str strangers even. So, Teak's now in the game. And, ooh, he's using a tier 8 Amagi. Very nice. 
let's battle. The problem that you have, or um, more or less have, is that you can only have one aircraft carrier in your team, in your platoon. And that means that um, you're pretty limited as far as matchmaking goes right now. As there are more ships, you're going to have more variety and you probably will have many, many more people playing other ships. But um, sometimes you just see a very, very good aircraft carrier user and you want to team up with them. Um, that's perfectly fine, but only one of you in a platoon can use an aircraft carrier to make sure that someone <laughs> without the platoon doesn't send out uh, four torpedo bomber squadrons and just sinks an entire uh, ship in one go because that is what you can do with four torpedo squadrons. Now you can see that uh, it takes quite a bit longer for this uh, battle to find a match for us and that's because uh, we're operating as a tier 8 battleship and tier 7 aircraft carrier and most people are still playing down at tiers 2 to 5, say 2 to 6. You can see a load of tier 2 ships queuing up suddenly. All of them destroyers and cruisers because you don't get anything else at that tier. And I have found that this sometimes does take a while. Wow, there's a tier 10 aircraft carrier waiting and even a Yamato. That is the tier 10 battleship. That's the only battleship that's currently in the game. Um, I have yet to see one. But from what I have seen, at least on uh, other YouTube videos, they are extremely deadly. And I prefer not to get too close, not even with my aircraft, because those things are just huge fortresses with anti-air guns. But unfortunately, I can't show you that battleship yet or I can show it to you, I just can't play it yet. Now this is taking a long time. I've got to say, there's quite a lot of battleships waiting to play the game. Some cruisers. Uh, the less cruisers, the better. Because cruisers for me are trouble in the sense that they are very capable of shooting down my planes. So if a battleship is being escorted by a friendly cruiser, then I'm in trouble. Uh, talking about trouble, I just found a tier 10 Essex class. It's the first time I've seen one of those actually in the game. I'm a tier 7 aircraft carrier. This Essex with its fighters is going to just destroy my fighters like they're not even there. That is how lethal these things are. They are extremely, extremely deadly. And the only real way that I can stand a chance, or that any of my planes can stand a chance, is by forming up in big groups. Not only uh, my own planes, but also that one from the LAX. Now, let's see where the fleet's going. Usually you get a couple of battleships going this way, because they have the nice open range. You got a couple of cruisers slash destroyers taking these routes because they're much more agile and can operate in that area. Okay, Reba is responding. He's cooperative. That's good. I'm going to send my fighter squadron to escort his so we can make one big blob of fighters. Um, but I don't think that we stand a lot of chance against the combined air power from the Essex and the Lexington. Maintaining Otherwise they got a couple of cruisers, um, tier 8 cruiser even, New Orleans, tier 8 Mayoko, tier 8 Fubuki, wow. Okay, this is going to be uh, an interesting game. And if I go down we can always have a look at Teague's tier 8 warship. His battleship. I'm thinking I'm slowly getting in his way. It's not something I want to do. Speed up. Now let's see where his torpedo squadrons are. They're circling. Okay, let's stick with them. Squadron 5 in the air. Let's 
let's see what they have. They're staying pretty grouped up. This Pensacola already took 5,000 points of damage. So it's probably slugging it out with a battleship. I'm turning away too far again. I want my aircraft carrier to go about there. Sometimes you see people um, going with the aircraft carrier all the way to the edge of the map. I have tried that. I've found that it is not that good. If you do, you're going to find that you are going to be less effective. Your DPS will drop because um, your planes take forever to go to and from the carrier. And uh, this is not good. If those things actually make it to my carrier, or to the Lexington uh, carrier that I'm assisting, then I'm in trouble. The fighters are also engaging something. Look at that. These are probably the fighters from the Lexington. And the red fighters are theirs, the green fighters are ours, and that is the two air wings from that Lexington carrier, that friendly, that just got wiped out. This one is just going to go down. It is done. There you go, it's out of ammo. That means it's going to be returning. And where are we going with these torpedo They even destroyed Squad 4. Uh-oh. don't like what I'm seeing here. This Lex is going to get hit by four torpedoes. It's not exactly... Ooh! Hammer and anvil movement. That ship is dead. Bloody hell. That means I'm next. And we are apparently going for the Lexington aircraft carrier here. Works for me. But I'm taking fire from a fighter squadron on my tail. to do any damage here. I might get one or two torpedoes in him, but that's about it. There we go, one, and it aimed, it landed in the water too late, so it wasn't active yet. Squadron 3 just got blown up. <sighs> okay, I can send up group 4 again. Or actually, it's a completely new group four. I'm not going to engage New Orleans. Pensacola is also a very, very heavily armed cruiser. Maintain at least AA-wise. So the question is where I'm going to send these ships, or these aircraft. Hmm. So we got a Nagato here. An Amagi who's taking a ton of fire, or just narrowly dodged it, from a cruiser and an Amagi. I don't think I'm going to be able to get these torpedo bombers through, but I might as well try. Also, I got to stick quite near to these cruisers. It's Pensacola. Uh, Teak is operating right there. Okay. See, this Pensacola, or this New Orleans, is distancing itself from that battleship. Look at that. This guy? This Nagato, possibly, or this uh, destroyer fired off torpedoes? Very likely to actually hit this Amagi. If this guy was slowing down, he would have been hit by those torpedoes. Now, let's jam a couple of torpedoes into the side of this battleship. Angle's terrible, and I'm probably dropping again. Yeah, I'm dropping too late. Returning to ship. Fine, do a dive bomber run. I got my fighters here, but they're more like... They're more likely to get shot down than actually do anything. Oh well. You know what? I might as well do a bigger spread. Got some damage. 348. Very, very nice run. And I might actually get a couple of sh 
torpedo hits on this ship. It's trying to dodge. One, two, three, four. That's not bad. And, uh oh. That ain't good. This thing is probably gonna make a nice snack out of my bombers as they're flying back. Or, no, it's going for my air wing. Fighters. Good thing. I got fighter support, or AA support, from the Amagi Fatigue. You can see that even then, I still lost three planes before I managed to take out a couple of them. And yeah, we got an aircraft, or a couple of dive bombers coming in. Presenting the smallest possible profile, but there are four. Make that two torpedo bomber squadrons who might be going for me. Shot down one of those planes. Where's the other one? Damn it, I'm on fire. Being on fire for an aircraft carrier is a very, very bad thing. If you're on fire, it means you can no longer um, take off or land your aircraft. And, yep, now I got torpedo bombers coming to finish me off. I cannot repair, so if a torpedo hits me, I'm going to be flooding. Um, let alone that I can barely hit these things. That's how fast they are. Trying to slow down. Come on. I might be slow enough to only eat one of those torpedoes. Yep, that one's going to hit me. Flooding. Now, where's that second squad? There. Those torpedoes are going to come in from the starboard side. And that's going to really hurt. Come on. That is going to really hurt. Two, three hits probably. One, two. Yep. I am flooding, but I'm not dead. So let's launch all of the aircraft again. I should have done that already. Um, <laughs> but with these fighters just vulturing over my uh, carrier, I'm not likely to be able to launch that many planes without being shot down. Now you can fly with your planes, but you cannot actually influence them. The only control you have is over your own ship. Look at that, I'm facing three squadrons on the map here. I'm just going to land these squadrons. It doesn't even matter if I take off. Stop the flooding. So at least that's something. Look at the score though. Three to nine. That is not good. Yeah, really. You're taking fire. I mean, you're getting your ass shot off by all of these fighters. I'm not even going to give them the pleasure of shooting these things down. I'm just going to land all of my squadrons. And so far as they're not getting destroyed before they get a chance to land. I might be able to destroy that squadron. Weird thing this, I say. Um, I'm destroying more aircraft with my AA fire than with my fighter squadron. And, oh crap. More torpedo bombers. Okay, retrieved some of my fighters. Not too many. Now it seems that those fighters have backed off. They might be still circling there. I'm not sure what their game is. And I'm also taking fire from something that might very well be a cruiser. As well as running into this island. Look at that, I only got one fighter left. Now, I'm manually targeting this squadron. That means that the squadron itself cannot be as accurate as it normally would be. And we got torpedoes which have been dropped in the wrong location. So I actually managed to survive this one. With the AA support from Teak. But um, unless Teak can sink, well, let's say seven ships, um, I don't really think that we are going to win this one.
I was considering going after this ship with a couple of torpedo bombers, but it is not going to be... Yep, there you go. I just got blown up by that cruiser. I was going to say it's not that likely to actually make it through. So, let's see how Teak is going to do. It's also taking quite some damage. Slugging it out with a Pensacola. A slugfest like that is in the advantage of the Amagi. Pensacola will just fire faster. But that's not really what I'm worried about. I'm worried about all those squadrons that are flying right over the ship. Oh, I managed to get one torpedo hit, by the way. My squadrons are still in the air. But, um... I just cannot control them. So they're just going to be sitting there as sitting ducks uh, for enemy aircraft, enemy AA fire to just take down. Come on, buddy, you can take down this Pensacola. Never actually seen one of these, or actually had a look at them. Quite the large amount of secondary guns here, but they're not in range yet, they're not firing. So AA fire, oh, actually, they are firing. Main batteries. And with a battleship, you always want to... Ah, Jesus. Try to broadside. Because you got two of the guns on the bow and three of the turrets on the stern of the ship. So you want to try to bring as many of those to bear on the enemy. Now, I got 849 XP, which for a loss... It's not that bad, actually. Shot down 13 aircraft. Look at that. Essex killed 40 aircraft. As well as destroying two ships. So this guy really got a ton of XP. Now, again, what kind of ship would you like me to play next? Do you have any requests? I got the Omaha, Independence class aircraft carrier, uh, Farragut, Ranger, which you just saw, which uh, went down beautifully, the Congo, or the Mutsuki Japanese destroyer. Hey, Jerama, nice of you to join. How is it compared to World of Tanks? Uh, completely different. It is um, the interface that you're used to from World of Tanks, although it looks different, but it's the same principle. Um, you just grind your way up with experience, try to get uh, new monsters to unlock, for example, a better layout of the ship, better guns, stuff like that. You got your tech tree over here, which still has some gaps in it, of course, since um, some ships they just, I don't know, they haven't tiered yet. For example, the jump from tier 4 to tier 6 lacks a tier 5 ship. Um, you got premium ships, but in this current stage of the beta, I'm not actually getting gold. Um, you cannot get premium accounts either. I'm not sure how Jingles is doing that, if anyone has seen his videos, but he is running with gold, so he can somehow do that. Um, some more destroyer gameplay. The Omaha... Congo. It's nice that you can all agree on one thing. <laughs> He's going with a tier 4 Phoenix. Um, closest thing I got is my tier 5 Omaha or the Congo. Let's go with the Omaha. Now, as with World of Tanks, you get a matchmaking of uh, plus 3, minus 3. Although in World of Tanks, it's plus 2, minus 2. Which means that I can face ships which are up to 3 tiers higher. That means that I might encounter a tier 8. Which is not exactly beneficial for uh, Teak and the Phoenix. Chronicus, thank you very much for your recommendation. Or for your... Uh, compliments there. Okay, this is the Omaha. Quite a bit of guns, some torpedoes on it, um, some AA guns, as you can see here on the middle of the ship. But otherwise, it is not a great AA platform. So I'm quite happy that there's only one Sepan crew, um, aircraft carrier. You can see that somehow, maybe my platoon matched or um, screwed up the matchmaking. <laughs> uh, since we got two more ships than the enemy team. But their ships are higher tiers than ours. Um, let's see, I'm going to go to C. C, 
see, where's Teak? There he is. If you're watching the stream, by the way, and you also have a World of Warships closed bed account, feel free to add me to your friends list and invite me to a platoon, or a division as they call it. How's the grind and the balance? Um, the grind is pretty good. Initially you grind through those ships very, very quickly. I think I got from tier 1 to tier 3 in one day, so say 2 to 3 hours. Um, you can probably go all the way up to tier 5 if you're very thorough. I'm thinking that they might change that though. I'm thinking that for um, the closed beta as it is now, they have lowered the grind ratios to make sure you can actually get to your ships faster. And that way they have more people testing out those ships. Do things feel blatantly unfair at times? Um, yes, like the aircraft carrier fight I had just a moment ago. If you have a carrier that's one tier higher than you, it's completely impossible for your fighters to do anything useful. Their fighters are going to be more effective, um, faster. That means they can also intercept your squadrons a lot better then you can intercept theirs. I've even seen squadrons of torpedo bombers outrun my fighters because they were simply mismatched. Um, otherwise, battleship-wise, cruiser-wise, I don't think they are that mismatched, so I think that the balance is okay. You can always have some influence on the game. Um, of Our course, it will depend on your skill level. Some games are better than others. It's always the same, like World of Tanks. And uh, yeah, Wargame will feed Jingle with privileges, definitely. Now, we've already captured C, and I'm arriving late to the party. And that is with a cruiser that has a speed of 34 knots. So these ships are a lot faster. The Cleveland out there, and the Nicholas-class destroyer that's in front of me. Interestingly, um, they have completely forgotten this side of the map, it seems. We do have an Nagato coming in, all the way out there. And I gotta start paying attention to that ship already. Um, in my tier 5, I'm not exactly a good match for that ship. What I can do is launch a scout plane. And that's gonna give me continuous vision on these ships here. So I'm gonna try and keep eyes on those and engage those as I get closer. Although that... Jeez, that's a Pensacola. That thing's two tiers higher than I am. That one is another Pensacola. This fight's going to be over pretty quick, or at least for me, let alone for Teak and the Phoenix. Now, let's see if I can get some lucky hits on this Pensacola. Maybe hit him in the Citadel a couple of times, and with that hopefully do some damage, because he, for now he's outside of torpedo range, but he might be focused on these two ships. Yep, there's the Nagato. Travel time, 5 seconds. Gotta slow myself down here a little bit. Yeah, got some nice damage done there. Keep firing. Rate of fire on the American cruisers is very nice. Um, I've yet to see the Japanese cruisers. I haven't really gone up that line yet. They are more torpedo class... I suppose you could say heavy destroyers. They seem to rely a lot more on main gun or uh, torpedoes. There is also a Pensacola here. That thing is probably not... He's not interested in me at this time. Considering he's going towards this island and just lost line of sight with whatever he's looking at. And I just paid him... I just made him aware of my presence here. Let's try not to steer into this island. Oh, he has 7,000 hit points. I might be able to get this guy down enough in order to actually kill him. Thirty-six hit points. Yep, someone else got him. Good. Now. There is a very heavily wounded Pensacola back there, but my shells are going to take forever to get there. Eight seconds. I might actually get him. Come on. Oh, wow, I got him. Enemy cruiser destroyed. 
Um, is armor penetration for long range and HE for close range? Um, armor penetration is for ships which are of the same type. Or at least that's the way I consider it. Because um, armor penetration versus battleships, for example, versus this ship is not going to be that effective. Since his armor is going to be more than my armor penetration, it's going to be difficult for me to actually penetrate this ship. So in that case, HE is more effective. Also, when you're firing at anything that's lower tier than you, or lower type, HE is going to be effective, because your HE damage, especially versus destroyers, for example, is going to do a nice amount of damage. Uh, HE is like for lightly armored ships. Yeah, exactly. Now, these ships are hiding behind the island. No shots. Let them burn. Who? ship is getting in range. It's another Panzer... How many Panzer Colors do they have? Finally, it's the last one. There's the carrier outside of my range. Um, this destroyer is going to make a torpedo run at him. That's what those Mitsukis do. I have to very slightly angle myself towards this ship. Now, in this case, it's a cruiser. Uh, Panzer Colors are not that heavily armored. So I'm going to stick to armor penetration, because it's going to give me the best damage output, or at least um, what I think. Oh crap, I didn't see you there. 1200. Torpedo narrowly missed that Pensacola. I'm trying to hit him in midships, there you go, hits the Citadel. Four and a half thousand points of damage done. Torpedo spreads in the water. Another 4,000 hits, or 4,000 points. Come on. Get this guy before another hits the Citadel. I'm just taking down a tier 7 ship here. Because of reasons. So, um, to go back to the previous question, yes, you can always make a difference in this game. Even hit the Citadel on a Mogami. Okay. Oh, of course, it's a cruiser. I thought it was a battleship there. Disabled his turret. I'm taking some damage here. Disabled another turret. Now, this guy, by the way, is in range of my torpedoes. The game is going to give you indications of where to aim. That's that lightly colored square that you can see there. Wow, he just citadeled me very, very, there you go, very heavily. Uh, let's see if these torpedoes are going to hit. Maybe. I only need one hit in order to destroy that ship. But he is turning to face them. Got any torpedoes left for the Nagato? Uh, not really. <laughs> I've probably got torpedoes left, but they're underwater. Lost eyes on that Mogami. Torpedoes ran out of fuel. We're going to win this game anyway. We're ahead by so many points. We captured two zones. We got less ships left than they do, but this is a pretty big difference in points in order to catch up. Our victory is in sight. Victory is in sight. Let's see how the other ships are doing here. Very heavily damaged Nagato here. You can see the entire ship is blackened by fire. Of course, in real life, this thing would look quite a bit different. Um, there would be pieces of the upper structure probably just completely missing. Not the way that it is now. He is focused, apparently, on something that's happening in front of him, this Cleveland. Otherwise, he might have used his rear turrets to engage that aircraft carrier. He definitely has the range to do it. Unfortunately, there he goes. Uh, by the way, this domination match also works by uh, losing points. You can actually lose points from this counter. It's not like a base um, encounter or capture the flag type of game. If you lose a battleship or an aircraft carrier, you lose 90 points. If you lose a cruiser or a destroyer, you lose 40 points from your score. And of course, if you lose all of your ships, you're likely to have lost all of your points. Look at the fire from this Cleveland, by the way. 
that is the amount of AA fire that I would like to have if I'm facing an air attack. 950 points. 60. On the top right of the screen, by the way, you can see what kind of results you got. I got 7 hits to the Citadel, which means the most important part of the ship. 7 critical hits, so I disabled a module. 45 hits total, and I sunk one warship, which was that extremely long-range Pensacola kill. So, 1300 XP. Let's see how well I did. <laughs> I actually came top in a tier 5. Uh, might be down to the amount of XP multiplier that I get, since I'm only a tier 5. Detailed report, I did 40,000 points of damage with only armor penetration. I didn't fire an HE shell at all. Not bad. Okay, um, I think that the one thing that I haven't played yet is the Matsuki. And the Congo I played, the Farragut I did, the Independence I haven't played, but it's another aircraft carrier. Let's see, he's tearing up with the Phoenix again. I would prefer a different ship. doesn't have one. Two times four and a tier eight. Um, that is not a good match then. If we can get to tier five with a Congo we can do a Congo platoon or at least I can use some more destroyers. Close to tier six cruisers. That would work. Um, what modules are there and what happens if they are destroyed or damaged? Uh, can they be totally destroyed? Um, can you repair them? The modules that there are, I believe, are propulsion, so maneuverability. Um, maneuverability is split up in two things, by the way. It is split up into, uh, on the one hand, your speed, so actually propulsion is in moving through the water. And then there's your rudder, which can also be damaged, so you got two elements back there. You got your turrets, which can be uh, damaged. You got your AA guns, which can be damaged. Um, otherwise, I don't think that there are that many modules. You got your torpedo launchers, as far as applicable, that can be destroyed. Um, if they are hit critically, I believe they do a terrible amount of damage to your own ship. So that is something that you need to keep in mind. But otherwise, you can repair any of them. You just hit the R key for repair, and your repair team, if it's available, is going to repair your ship. And by if it's available, I mean that they have a cooldown. You cannot be repairing them all the time. Let's see, this matchmaking is a lot better, both for me and for Teak. They got two aircraft carriers. That's a bit concerning, since my AA isn't that good. We got two aircraft carriers that are could Tier 3 Kawachi, that thing's out of place here. Congos, Fuso, a couple of Phoenixes, a couple of large amount of tier 4 cruisers. That should be a nice turret for my Omaha. One tier 6 and a tier 6 destroyer. Hey Killsaber, welcome to the stream. Now in these domination matches I might try to coordinate with the rest of the team where I'm going to go. Um, to make sure that I'm not going out there completely alone. Looks like this uh, Isokaze is also going that way. Nice to have some backup there. Let's see about the other ships here. We got the Fuso, the Congo, the Cleveland and the Mayogi together. And then a couple of warships on the other side that I just cannot see. Aircraft carriers launching torpedo squadrons and a fighter squadron. If those guys coordinate at all, then we have a pretty good chance of actually holding that sector. Although, um, as mentioned, that Saipan with its fighters is going to be quite dangerous. It can easily knock down the fighters from the Independence class carriers that I have on my team. Well, let's set up a recon. 
Sometimes, by the way, if you see one of these sectors, you're going to see um, a smoke screen go up. That's when you know that there is an enemy destroyer operating in the area. I would like this destroyer to put up a smoke screen because it's going to cover us both. And that makes the chances for our survival a lot better. There you go, he's now putting up a smoke screen. What is this? This is a Kuma Tier 4 Japanese cruiser. Let's start doing some damage. Too much lead. Now this is a pretty annoying area to operate in, in the sense that I want to do a broadside, but if I do a broadside, then I might run into the, well, the, the bay wall on the other side. So you gotta turn in time. This destroyer is making waves and trying to get the hell out of here. And there is a Cleveland behind him. That is generally not good for my health. Try and get this ship out of the way as soon as possible, but it's... F uh oh. I'm sending out some torpedoes. Losing hit points left, right and center. Mostly to that Cleveland, by the way. And he dodged my torpedoes. It's a bit unfortunate, but there he goes. Oh, crap. See, a friendly aircraft carrier, just very uh, friendly, dropped a couple of torpedoes right in my way. I'm trying to sink that cruiser. Please make sure it's gone. And I ran into the cruiser. And yeah, I'm dead. I'm gone. There you go. That's what I get for going up against a Cleveland and for trying to dodge my friendly torpedo bombers. So let's see how Teak is doing. This is Eric, Division, Muck Family, Texi, James. Come on, where are you? Here you go. Phoenix class cruiser. Let's see, he's going towards C. We are losing points, by the way. No one has even bothered to capture B from neither team. A has been captured by the enemy, and C is very heavily being fought over. But it looks like they just, yeah, they just lost that Cleveland. Now, as uh, Teak is going to save the game, no pressure there. I'm going to be right back, so just enjoy this gameplay. Be right back. team has taken the lead.
Okay, back here. Now, it seems that the team is still not doing that well. Uh, we captured C. How many teams ahead by a little over 200 points? 230 by now. We're losing ships. There you go, that just gained them quite a few points. So that's trouble. Now, as Teak is going to finish off this game, I'm going to exit to port. And I'm going to show off you guys some other ships that, um, while you cannot play them, you can see them. And that's something that I really like about World of Warships. You can actually see the ships that you're going to be getting. <coughs> Consider it like uh, World of Tanks, you want to see the, sh the, the tank that you're going to get. That's how it works here. For example, um, the Japanese Yamato, or Yamato. I can see it, but it's uh, sort of sepia colors, so that means that I cannot actually use it yet. It's not researched. But you can see what the magnitude of this ship is. It is huge. It has quite a few guns. Um, <laughs> understatement. It has these three, three turreted um, main batteries of 460 millimeters. Now, I looked up how big a shell is. Um, it's as big as a human. That's how big these shells are that this ship fires. They do a damage, on average, HE damage, 5,500. The armor penetration damage is 15,000. Now, that is more than the hit points of my Mutsuki. Um, my Congo could survive maybe one salvo from one gun. Um, or say from one turret, three shells. So that is going to be very, very lethal. But this ship not only has these main armaments, you can also see that it has quite the battery mounted on the side of the ship. And that's this secondary armament of 12 um, dual barrel 127 millimeter guns. It's these guys. And they have a lot of those turrets. So if you can get within 5 kilometer range of this ship, you're going to be not only engaged by the main battery, but also by this secondary armament. Now this is something that you don't have to aim yourself, this is something that the game does for you. It's very convenient because it saves you the hassle of having to target every single gun on your ship. Um, it also has some even higher caliber, 155 millimeters, and you can see that those are also mounted in turrets above the main turrets of the ship. One there, and one on the rear of the ship. AA guns, it also has an enormous amount of. Um, it has 46 of these triple mount 25mm uh, guns with a range of 3 kilometers. DPS of these things is 368. That means that they can just pretty much squash my fighters out of the sky with one salvo. And for longer range, they got some 5.1km uh, range 127mm guns, which is the secondary battery of this ship, the secondary armament. Maneuverability of the ship, um, as expected, it has a huge turn circle of 800 meters. Concealment is not good, it can be detected from very, very far away, 18 kilometers, or 17 kilometers from an aircraft. Now, other ships, um, something that I'm working towards myself is, uh, for example, the Pensacola or the Dem-1, which is the Tier 10 American cruiser. You can see it's a very, very sleek ship. It has a nice bow, as far as I'm concerned. It even has some AA guns over there. So this ship is not only armed with these very heavy 203mm batteries, which, by the way, only have a maximum armor penetration damage of 5,500 instead of 16,500 from the Yamato. They got some secondary armaments. Um, those are the smaller guns. They got a large amount of secondary weaponry. 12 of these 2.1km uh, mounts. Some 76 for 5.5km range. And some more guns for 5.5km range. So these are really the AA platforms of the fleet. Maneuverable. Um, turning circle is pretty bad, actually, for a cruiser. Considering that the Yamato has a turning radius of 800 meters, this thing actually needs more man uh, more space to maneuver. Air detectability is a bit lower, so as far as that's concerned, um, it's it makes sense. This ship is not as big, although it's still a huge ship. It's a huge target. It carries a scout plane, as most cruisers do, starting from Tier 5, I believe. And this is something that I am looking forward to.
because I think that um, with a very high speed and a ton of AA guns, you can be a very valuable escort. And another ship that I am working my way up towards, but which is taking some time, is the Essex. Now the Essex is the, the pride and joy, really, of the US carrier fleet. It even carries quite a bit of secondary armament. You can see that these are 127mm guns. Sir, uh, dual purposing both as AA guns and ground guns, or ground target guns. They don't do a ton of damage, but they will probably fire pretty quickly. These ships carry a ton of planes. And I mean they can have five squadrons in the air at a single moment. Compared to my four squadrons, and these are uh, three bomber squadrons and two torpedo bomber squadrons, makes them extremely deadly. Alright, enough with the chatter. Let's make another game. Um... <coughs> Let's see, I do want to finish up with the Omaha tonight. Um, this guy only had tier 5s, I think. Actually, I'm going to leave it up to you guys. What ship do you want me to play next? Battleship, destroyer, carrier, or cruiser? Unfortunately, I don't have any room uh, nor enough credits to purchase another ship at this stage. But maybe I can do that later tonight if I get one of these ships done, like for example the Omaha. Now Teak has now a tier 6, that's good. Or a tier 5, he has the Omaha as well. That means I can take my Farragut. Um, I haven't, or actually the Mutsuki, I haven't played this ship at all yet, I'm still at 0% experience. The ship is mostly a torpedo runner. A torpedo range on these is not great, it's only uh, 6 kilometers, and my detection is also 6. So this thing is not as stealthy as I would like it to be. The um, destroyer that you get prior to this one is the tier 5, and the tier 5 has some very, very long range torpedoes. It has, I believe, uh, 10 kilometer range, and considering you can be detected only at 6 kilometers away, you can actually fire those torpedoes, not be detected, and um, just stay outside the detection range of the enemy. Um, <laughs> this is some interesting matchmaking, I gotta say. We got another Lexington on our team versus some very, very high tier cruisers, battleships, etc. <laughs> and even some medium tier destroyers. Now, um, <laughs> I think that Teak and Omaha is in quite a bit of trouble. Okay. Let's see, Iron Tiger, tier, tier 8 Amagi. Yeah. Oh, it's my destroyer that's getting put into higher tier games. Destroyers, by the way, are not pure scout ships. Um, they can fulfill that role to some extent because they're fast, they are not easy to detect, and they can deploy smokescreen, but they can also pack a hell of a punch with those torpedoes. So don't think that these things are just scouts. Um, just as much as cruisers are not your medium tanks for World of Tanks. They just don't have the same mission profile. Letting the team know where I'm going. You can see this ship is maneuverable, given that. Let's see, I'm maneuvering now at currently 38 knots and still gaining speed. That is extremely fast for a ship. 38.9, that's where the meter stops. 39.1. This means that I'm more or less traveling at almost 70 kilometers per hour through this water. See quite a few of those heavy warships, Nagatos, there's the Amagi. 
I can launch my torpedoes now, but it takes 90 seconds to rearm them. Um, not exactly useful at this point. I might be able to rush that one, that Nagato. Although I would like one of those ships to get very close to this sector where I can actually am ambush them. Hiding behind the island for now. That Amagi. Look at this row of battleships here. That is not good. Stopping the ship here. And... <coughs> Capture Bravo. Our team has taken the lead. Now they got a cruiser over there, I just cannot see it very well. They got a battleship out here, that's another Nagato, and a Maki. So they got two of those. And three Nagatos. Hmm. Interestingly, we already lost one destroyer, that Farragut, and they lost a Nagato. So that carrier did a ton of work. By the way, this Amagi is going to detect me, if it hasn't already. It is not in a very good torpedo angle for me. I'm going to wait till it gets a little bit closer. 4.5 kilometers. Four, three, two. My torpedoes are fast. Speed on these things is twenty, sorry, sixty-five knots, I believe. Which means that they're gonna close this distance extremely quickly. Come on, buddy. Okay. Full speed ahead, deploy smoke screen, fire torpedoes. Turn the hell away from here. I do not want to get here when that ship actually starts shooting me. Now this ooh. Sorry, didn't see you there. Run. I don't think any of my torpedoes are going to hit here. Well, maybe that spread. Wow! Look at that. I got hit by one salvo from that warship. That Nagato just one shot at me. Or one salvo at me, I think would be more appropriate for this game. Beautiful shot by Broshiel there. And I did nothing in this game but capture Bravo. Now let's see where Teak is operating. Corbin, Psyche, Teak. He's already taken some fire. Seems to be almost all in position here. Yeah, he's engaging that battleship. Now here comes another torpedo run from the Lexington. Unfortunately, um, if you are observing, you cannot see from the perspective of the carrier. Or actually, you can have a look at the carrier, but it's not interesting because you're only seeing the carrier itself. You cannot actually see the perspective from the torpedo bombers. But I think that this is going to be another successful torpedo run. Seems to be enough room there to maneuver for the torpedo bombers, although they have taken some damage. 46,000 hit points. Torpedoes in the water. There, wow. That thing just lost 30,000 hit points. And there's a second squadron on the way. These things are so bloody lethal. The lead. Another torpedo squadron. Torpedoes in the water. One hit. Nagato is repairing itself. Yeah, I think that's the only hit they're gonna get. So it actually made it through. That thing damn near got one shot. Now we control A and C, so we're getting a lot more points than the enemy team is. There's that. <coughs> Look at the huge smokestack of this carrier. 
the Lexington class. I think it looks really nice for a carrier. A lot of AA guns mounted on the sides here, as AA is usually the only threat that carriers really were built for. Um, if a destroyer, like in this game, if a destroyer gets too close, this thing's toast, but um, I think don't think in that in real life that really happened that often. If at all, I gotta say. New Orleans engaging in... Nah, that's not gonna go well for him. He's engaging in a Magi. He has fire support from a Nagato. Might survive this. Doing a nice bit of damage there. Quite a bit of damage there. Uh, Fuso probably just tried to really hurt this Nagato, but did not aim his shots correctly. And instead of finishing off this New Orleans with a couple of salvos, the Amagi is instead going for the Nagato. He probably considers it a bigger threat. But the DPS from the New Orleans is going to really stack up. You see there that uh, Fuso has taken an interest in this ship. Or the Mogami. Yep, there you go. But it was not him that killed him. It was... Maxor? Our victory is inside. Who is that even? Mm. Mm, never mind. Another Japanese battleship here. This is the Amagi. No way he's gonna hit that Nagata when that thing gets behind the island. Yeah, we definitely got this game. By the way, if you're in chat, let me know if you want me to play War Game for a bit tonight. I don't mind. Maybe you're getting bored of just watching World of Warships and you actually want to be able to play with me in a game. In that case, I'm happy to play War Game Red Dragon, so just let me know. Look at the size of this ship, and the size of those guns. Basically just floating gun batteries. And some cola there, not in a good spot. And he just got sunk by Iron Tiger, so this salvo did a lot of damage. Now he's trying to get a full broadside salvo onto that Mogami. Problem is, it takes forever for these rear turrets to start turning around. I do sometimes still play World of Tanks, but not that often. Um, it would be interesting to play that for a bit, though. Got burned out. Already ruined it. Yeah. Um, I got burned out when my friends stopped playing that game. I got pretty much all the tanks in World of Tanks that I wanted to get. So there's really nothing much more for me there. Play mediums and scouts. Yes, yeah, same here. Look at that, 156! Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Um, okay. I want to get the Omaha done. I want to get the Cleveland. Hopefully, if we're both in an Omaha, we're not going to get terrible matchmaking. I still need 3,500 more XP. Okay, let's see. 
we got cruisers queued up, and we got some battleships, but not that many. Four battleships, a whole bunch of cruisers, a couple of Minikaze destroyers. What's the Hatsuharu doing out here? A tier 7. Tier 7 destroyer. Hmm. Gotta say, matchmaker's not that friendly on me today. Okay. Jeez, I'm getting tired of this map. I know it's not domination this time around, but still. Uh, let's see, where's my buddy? Tell me he's on the other side. Oh, here he is. Hmm, let's see. I don't really serve any of my battleships well as an AA platform because I simply don't have that many AA guns. I can try and take out some destroyers, but I need to be able to turn, so I'm not going to go in here. Although Teak thinks differently. Let's see. Stick with the other cruisers. We can make a small cruiser wolf pack. We have a decent chance of survival. He has a scout plan up, so I don't need. I don't really need to send up my own. <coughs> Just say pan. We got a ranger. If you're following chat here, it's um, an interesting discussion. Someone says cruisers should stick with battleships to provide AA support. Um, normally, I'd agree, but this cruiser does not have a lot of AA, and that means that I cannot really serve my battleships that well. Get on the gato here. Um, I don't want to get too far down the middle, so I'm going to make a pass around this island. See if I can find anything. Battleship firing at 16 kilometers. Look at that. He's engaging that Fuzo. Lost sight. Some hits. Not all of those shells hit the water. US ships get a lot of AA in the high tiers. Yes, absolutely. First time I was in a carry on and engaged to Cleveland while I got my planes back in pieces. Those Clevelands do not mess about at all. And not only their AA is good, they're just all-round good ships. Gee, I'm taking a lot of damage here. Gotta get out. Good thing it wasn't firing or penetration rounds. I'll slow down a little bit. See, now our torpedo tubes are out of action. At least it looked like they were. Let's see, there's a battleship, battleship. Where are the destroyers? There's one down, one left. 14 clicks out, too far away for me. Send up my plan on the forwardmost ship here. <laughs> they sound like a chainsaw when they fire off. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Those things are deadly. The Cleveland's we're talking about there. I'm 
very, very worried about that battleship. He's completely unescorted. Um, this is one of the players in World of Tanks that goes off on his own. And then, as he's getting killed by two battleships here, starts moaning, Where are my escorts? You noob team, I didn't get any help. That's those kind of players. And now he's getting a torpedo bomber squadron right up his starboard flank. Let's see, this is the Omaha. I should not be allowed to sail right through this middle. But they're not doing a lot about it. That was not a love lead at all. Change course, distance, 15 clicks, too far away for me. Oh yeah, right. See, now my repair team is out of action for 90 seconds. Is that five clicks? Just gonna risk it. Firing a salvo of torpedoes in case that uh, Omaha cruiser just happens to show up unexpectedly and not watching for torpedoes. Too much lead, one hit. Lucky that had in the way there. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm sailing into something. Don't worry about me. Sometimes the game will auto-correct your course. It is extremely annoying when it happens. Because the game um, is not that good at collision avoidance, let's put it that way. Sometimes the game will steer you the wrong way. Some, once I was um, maneuvering with a destroyer, it tried to correct my course by sailing me into an island instead of away from it. By the way, I'm going to be torpedoed in here, I guarantee it. To get the ship down a lot less health very, very quickly. Come on. There's the torpedoes. That just cost me a ton of hit points. Come on, turn. Good thing I didn't have full speed there. Evaded all of the torpedoes, but now I'm being engaged by another Omen as well. Yeah, I'm good as done. Got the enemy ship though. Enemy cruiser foundered. Fire. Couple of hits, one hit only. Yep, there you go. Too aggressive by me. Stupid play. Another hit to Citadel with my last salvo. There goes my ship, torn in two. Now, Furion, Wazil, Little Pity, Teak. Somehow Teak always seems to stay alive where I die. Good thing that Cleveland's out of the water. And Nagato's gonna go down very easily. Torpedo Squadron. Where's the Torpedo Squadron coming from? It came all the way from the right side, so the carry might be there. And they have more trouble. There's a Mogami. It's a tier 7. Tier 5 cruiser. Not really a match for a tier 7 Japanese cruiser. Plus, these torpedo bombers. It's even more trouble to be had. Lost a ton of hit points there. Torpedoes have probably... Yeah, they're coming around for a turn now. Being dropped. Why is he firing his torpedoes at a ship that's 12 clicks away? You can see that the AA on the Omaha really isn't that good because he just did not kill any of those fighters or torpedo bombers. Five by five. This game can go either way. Ooh, this just put him on fire. He was managing he managed to put it out. But 
he's down at 71 hit points. That means that even a splash damage shell or a splash damage can kill him. And we're being capped. Yep. We got a couple of bombers going that way, but I don't think that they can actually neutralize the ship that's in there. Let's probably let last surviving Minikaze destroyer. There you go. Alright, next game. Any requests for specific ships? Let me know now. Let's see, I got three points that I can use on research. Uh, this is my Omaha destroyer, or sorry, cruiser. Can deploy another smoke screen, which is something I cannot do anyway. Um, I don't really need a repair team that bad, or I can deploy more defensive fire. That might be interesting though. Available on cruisers with a dual purpose battery. I am going to get one of those soon. I think that the Omaha doesn't have it, but the Cleveland might. Artillery, secondary armament, 127 mil. Yeah, it would be interesting for the cruiser that's about to follow. Okay, uh, back to the Omaha. Unfortunately, it's in battle now. Can't pick it. Let's try big battle. Amagi. Okay, that's. That means I'm going with this ship. Aircraft carrier. I hope I'm not going to face another Lexington or Tier 10. Unfortunately, I probably will because there's a Lex in the queue. These two carriers, these two Saipans on Tier 6 just got matched up together. We're um, lucky or unlucky, depending on how you look at it, we might get teared up with that battleship, that Yamato. There we go. What kind of matchmaking are we going to get? Come on. Show me already. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. There's a Ranger and a Lexington. My planes are again toast. I just cannot do anything against those. Then they also got a Baltimore, which is a tier t uh, tier nine U.S. cruiser. And that means a ton of AA. Ooh, this isn't good. <clears throat> Battle starts. Now all I can really do is scout with my aircraft, and that's about it. I can try to send out bombers, but I um, <laughs> guess the combined air wing from a Ranger and a Lex? Yeah, not really. Ready for Okay, I need to stick to a cruiser. That's a good idea. We got a tier 9 for Ibuki. Is that a cruiser? What is an Ibuki class? It has to be a cruiser. Cleave. Mogami. Ibuki. Yeah, that's a cruiser. Okay, let's get the other squadrons in there. And keep them close to a very heavily armored AA unit. Just gonna keep them near the battleships for now. I can replace my fighters about 1.5 times and then I'm out of them. Oh crap. Here comes the air wing. 
I'm still trying to rush towards these battleships. If I don't, I'm not going to survive for very long on my own. I need the combined AA fire from all these ships. Run! Come on, faster. Get in the cover of all of these ships. It's not going to be a lot, but it's something. And now we actually stand a better chance. Look at that. This torpedo bomber squadron is taking a ton of fire. So far, I've only killed one, two fires by now. So much for my torpedo bomber squadron, they just completely got wiped out. Another fighter down. Squadron destroyed. Then there's that, and they're going after my other squadron, of course. And that's just two squadrons. That is just two of them. Hello. Unfortunately, I'm running very, very low on ammo with these fighters, so they're going to have to report back to my carrier very soon. Let's see, what are you? Cleveland. Okay, not going to engage that. Out of weaponry. Okay. Stick to the BBs. The big guns. There's another battleship out there. Oh god, it was not for battleships. The enemy this terrain's a nightmare. Gone. I'm not sure why he went in here. But it's a very, very densely populated area with icebergs. All now, they don't uh, do anything support. nasty to your ship. They just stop you. But it does mean that your ship is not going to be as capable of maneuvers as it normally would be. Now, these fighters are just praying for my just, uh, torpedo bombers here. Gonna have to be careful with these ships. This is a Baltimore. It's Cleveland and a Mogami. I might be able to sneak them back there and get a couple of hits on that Nagato. That is, if those fighters from the enemy carriers aren't watching. Look at that, the score. Already 200 points behind. And here come the fighters. Run, run, run. Taking fire. This is not going to go down well. Again, they're being lured into the fighter cover or AA cover from these battleships. So there's that. My AA cover will also help, although not that much. Battleship. Three there, four there. Five right down the pool. I'm going to try and do a pincer movement. One from this flank, the other one from the other flank. Standing by for instructions. This battleship's not making it easy. Go. There-ish. Hit. Put him on fire. Might give me a couple of torpedo hits. Four. Hang on. Yeah, maybe one. Two torpedo hits. Autopilot mode enabled. No. My fighters to go, they're not my carrier. Autopilot mode instructions. Okay, here we go. Oh, 
By the way, the ship's probably going to be dead long before my torpedoes hit anything. Jesus, I feel so useless in this kind of matchmaking. Oh, and there's a couple of ships coming on my port side. Screw it, I'm just going to stop here. <sighs> matchmaking is not good on this one. Standing by for instructions, over. Ship went down there. We lost way too many ships already. Surprising that they haven't killed me yet. Where's my fighters? All stations requesting fire support. Group two destroyed. Brilliant. That's my fighters done. Orleans, Cleveland, Cleveland. <laughs> God. How am I supposed to engage these ships? I got a ton of AA. Screw it. I'm gonna do at least a bit of damage this match. The enemy is about to win. That hurt. What is shooting me? Oh, a BB from out there. Right. That explains it. This Cleveland knows exactly what's going on. Where he's turning away from me. Or from my bombers. He knows exactly how to dodge these guys. That's too close. Crap. Bad run. God. Such a Look at that. I dropped him almost on his deck. That's never gonna work. <laughs> and I keep shooting down fighters with a frickin' aircraft carrier. Scores are terrible. Okay, let's try this again. About there. Oh, and there's a huge swarm of torpedoes coming up from behind me, and my side, of course. Yeah, the ship is dead. Tell me you got something. Oh, more than something. You got two torpedo hits and a kill. Not too bad. And there you go. God, I'm not doing that again. Matchmaking is terrible this high up. 809 experience, though. Only got 19,000. What's the repair cost on this ship? Credits. Auto repair, 53,000. Wow, okay. Okay. Um. No, I'm not using my independence anymore. I might as well sell off that ship. Yeah, I wanna de no I'm not demount sell these things. There you go. So the ship has nowhere near enough experience to be upgraded. Although the Yeah, the free XP I can use. More combat capacity, a bit more AA guns. Okay, gonna play one more match, and then I'm gonna play possibly an hour of war game, and that's it for tonight's stream. So, last chance to pick a warship. Omaha can be upgraded. Um, no, not yet. I'm still not anywhere close to those 17,000. Cleveland, how far am I off this ship? Hang on, back to tree. Modules. Omaha. Cleveland. Yeah, I'm about 2,000 XP off. Oh, 
Okay, for the last one, I'm just going to pick the Farragut class destroyer. Torpedoes are terrible range, but why not? Hmm. In that case, I'll take a Congo. Not ready. Congo ready. Battle. And then we're probably going to see that I'm getting dragged up by the destroyer. Or actually, I was using a cruiser, not a destroyer. Never mind. Myogi's tier 4, tier 3. See, this is better. This I can work with. Even I'm the only warship, only a battleship here. It's a bit low. Oh well. Could be an interesting match, this. General Quarters. And again, this map... Feels like there are not really enough maps in this game yet. I will need some AA fire from any kind of warship that'll do it. Although Langley's don't have the best torpedo bombers, I should be able to evade those. Set up a recon on And I'm gonna get a little bit close to those cruisers. on these guns. 19 clicks? Bloody hell. <laughs> I'm used to ranges of 15, 12, something like that for cruisers and destroyers. Slow down a little bit. I want to use as much of this open terrain as I possibly can. There's the first volunteer. My Yogi class battleship. Except he's too far away. Actually, not too far away, but hiding. Rain or shelf line time is 14 seconds. Ship's not really maneuvering at full speed yet. Let's give him some lead. Hopefully, that was enough. Mm, no hits at all. Nothing. Torpedo bombers. Yep, there they come, right down the middle. Let's hope those fire squads can intercept that. Get to clear this island as soon as possible. Oh crap. That is where the real threat's coming from. Okay, I gotta make a decision now. I'm gonna have to turn as far away from these torpedoes as I possibly can. It's probably gonna put some hurt at that Lewis class of cruiser. Hopefully. No hits, no hits. Yeah, one hit. Almost 3k damage. This is what I was expecting. It's gonna hit me once. And we're flooding. We're hold below the water line. We're flooding quickly. Problem There's another squadron sir. coming in. But it got taken out. Excellent. Now let's try not to ram this island. 
That would be great. See, I feel kind of useless in a battleship because I've only done one hit, albeit a 3,000 point damaging hit, but it was only one hit. Now it seems that the entire enemy team went to the left flank, barring some cruisers. This is not good. That carrier needs to start making steam towards the port flank right now, or it's good as dead. Come on, get this gun on target. It takes forever. And there you go, it already got taken out before I even managed to aim the guns. What? I shot down a torpedo bomber. But of course, that's what we do here. There's a DD there. Be careful with that. This is probably not aimed high enough. Oh, some of them managed to go through. One hit for the whole of 260. Very nice. Almost no damage. Ten seconds to aiming, or to reloading. T torpedo flight again to my starboard. Correction port. Please hit. I could use some damage. Damage done, that is. I'm making it pretty damn easy for these shit things to hit me. There's torpedoes in the water, but where? On the flag. Stop the ship. Let's start, start considering this DD as a threat as well. And there's another destroyer back there. Here comes a second spread of torpedoes, full speed ahead, out of range. Okay, good. Come on. Lost sight. Really? I'm not gonna risk a complete salvo. That would be brilliant. Good thing that those things don't have a range yet. Might hit him, it might not. Yeah, it got him a little bit. Far too little hit points down on that ship. And here comes another flight of DDs. Beautiful. I'll hit, I'll get one of those. Flooding. We're holding below the water line. We're flooding quickly. Here's that annoying destroyer. I'm just gonna try and do exactly the same thing. There you go. Torpedoes are already in the water. Good hit. Enemy heavily damaged. Please aim the bow turrets as well. Another wave of torpedoes. I'm gonna eat two. Oh crap. Didn't even see those coming. Yeah, I'm done. I am so done. Damn it. <sighs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I don't use destroy uh, battleships at all.
Alright guys, well that's it for the stream for tonight. Um, I won't be playing Red Dragon after all because I didn't announce it on the channel earlier. I just only announced World of Warships. So um, I might be streaming Dragon another night. We'll see about that. Just keep an eye on the channel. Replay for the stream is also going to be uploaded. Um, it's going to be a while because it's a big file, but it'll probably be up tomorrow. So you can review it if you wasn't if you weren't here to catch the stream. Anyway, thanks for joining. Hope you had fun. Um, unfortunately, I cannot help you with a key for uh, World of Warships yet, but hopefully it's going to come out soon. We'll see. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.